my first trimester at the Institute that I was fortunate to find my own inspiration. One of my areas of focus as a sexologist and sex educator is helping parents and including other adults who also work with children in their lives uh, to shift their thinking about sex education for the next generation, children, uh, young children, teens, adolescents, and young adults. Children are sexual from the moment they're born. Dr. Sellers uh, shared that same point in her presentation. There's proof that even in utero, children will touch their genitals. Thinking about working as a parent and how difficult it can be to talk to your kids about sex, just know that children want to hear from their parents about sex. It is a trusted source. I see sex education for our children as being a process of enlightenment, education that results in understanding and the spread of knowledge. The foundation, really, of what I teach about human sexuality to or helping parents is the five building blocks to a healthy sexuality. And each of these building blocks, communication at the bottom, consent, respect, pleasure, and fantasy, each of these blocks is a core component that needs to be discussed as we teach children about sex and sexuality, regardless of whether we take an abstinence-only, before-marriage sex education approach or a comprehensive sex education approach. In America, when you talk about sex education to parents, many cringe, many are afraid, scared, don't know what to say. I hear that this is similar in China as well. Lots of people, lots of adults, when they think of sex education, they, they immediately think of that it means talking to children about sexual positions or the like. And in my opinion, it needs to start with something as basic as this. Um, expanding the thinking beyond just penises and vaginas and intercourse. Breaking it down into even more basic. The base of that five building blocks is communication. And it's important to teach our children that it's okay to communicate our needs, wants, desires, and to teach the ability to listen to the same. Being able to feel and to recognize and identify, and most importantly, communicate those feelings. I'll give you a, a quote from a very famous man in the United States. Uh, his name was Mr. Rogers. And he, he was very famous in the United States for having a television show that helped children through many different types of situations, divorce, um, death. And he has a quote that he, that he said in a Senate hearing to try to get funding for public television, which was the network his station, his show was on. And he said, if we can only make it clear that feelings are mentionable and manageable, it would be a great service to mental health. I'd like to take it a step further to say this is important for our sexual health. Consent is something that I think, at least in America, a lot of parents seem to overlook when they talk to their children about, they don't seem to think about it as, as something that they need to teach about um, as it relates to sex. But it is very important for children to learn about boundaries. Being able to say no and to accept a no when someone gives them one. To do 
no harm to someone else is also critically important to teach a child. Now, if you think about this in terms of when kids are roughhousing or tickling even, uh, if it doesn't feel good, they have to stop. So if you're roughhousing and someone is getting hurt, obviously you have to teach them that they need to stop. Or even, like I said, with tickling, if someone is tickling and it's too much, you know, kids need to know when to stop as well. We give mixed messages, in America at least, as it relates to telling kids about stranger danger. We tell kids that it's so they have to hug grandma or auntie or uncle when they come into town, mm -hmm. even when they don't really want to give a hug. And I'll give you an example of that. Um, and this was the eye opener for me. I have a niece that I hadn't seen in a year, and my sister came into town with her daughter, and my mom was, grandma was there as well. And I sort of, you know, squatted down, and I said, oh, come give me a hug. And she just kept holding on to her mom's leg, my sister's leg, and didn't want to come give me a hug. And I said, okay, that's fine. If you don't want to give me a hug right now, that's okay. Just know that when you're ready to give me a hug, I'll take one. And she was, you know, she stayed close to mom. And my mom said, oh, just grab her and give her a hug. And I said, no, she's, she's giving me a very clear, this little child was two years old, didn't have the verbal ability to say, I don't want a hug. But that action of showing me, like, no, I'm, I'm going to stay close to mom, she was telling me very clearly that she did not want a hug. And so we get these mixed messages, you know, stranger danger, but yet you have to give a hug to somebody you don't necessarily want to give a hug to. <laughs> so kids learn about boundaries through us. Um, I think this is important. All of these things are important as it relates to when a child is five, they're learning these things. And if they don't learn them appropriately, think about when they're 15 and they're being tried as, as older children. And then again, when they're 25, yeah, they need to learn them when they're very young. Respect is a respect for self. It's issues with body image, being okay with nakedness. Children don't learn shame or guilt about their bodies when they're, when they're very, many kids like to run around naked. Um, they learn that shame or guilt about their body. Self-love, respect for others, including the opposite sex. It's important to encourage boys and girls to be friends, for understanding each other, not to make it secretive or mystical or unknown or not understood. We have to encourage the ability to build good non-sexual friendships with the opposite gender as adults. My colleague, Dr. Jody Schmidt, addressed pleasure when he talked about um, the power of human touch. And if you think about how healing, just simple touch is, most people, most adults tend to think of touch as, as a sexual thing, especially American adults. Um, but get a, if you think of that really much needed hug, sometimes a hug can evoke tears, and sometimes it can soothe tears. Pleasure is much more than just sexual pleasure. <laughs> and fantasy <laughs> is also a building block to healthy adult sexuality. It's okay to fantasize. Not all fantasies need to be acted out or fulfilled. When we're young, we do role plays, we invent games, we pretend using all of our imagination. When does it stop? I want us to move away from using fear as a tactic to teach about sex. I like to think that using reason works. Using the example of talk, teaching children about a stove, for example, we, don't, we, we start with, don't touch, hot. But then as they get older, we give more specific reasons as to why they should be careful. 
For example, when the stove gets on, when the stove is on, it's hot. The stove can be used in ways that are beneficial. Kids need to understand the stove's power and potential before they can use it. We don't start with the worst case scenario to teach them about using a stove. We don't show them pictures of third degree burns to, uh, to make our point. But the sex negative equivalent of that is used in many sex education classes when we're shown pictures of STIs. Talking about sex in the context of relationships and mutual pleasure as it relates to sex is important. So the majority of my classes and work is a version of kind of a continuing education for parents or train the trainer. I want to help adults have the tools, knowledge, and comfort to talk with their children and the young people that they deal with openly and honestly. These blocks that I told you about are important whether a person is two or 102. These concepts can be learned at any age and one can begin where the